We're continuing on. If you've been here in the last couple of weeks, we're continuing on with our sermon series, Holy Spirit Producing Change. Uh, we're talking about the fruits of the Spirit, and, and so we're glad that you are here. Um, I, I was a little nervous about Caleb with that pool noodle. Um, I was afraid you might feel like hiding back there or something. I'm like, going to have to be looking over my shoulder for him to come with a pool noodle. But he's sitting in the front row, so I, I feel a little more comfortable. Uh, I can keep my eye on him, and I don't see a pool noodle anywhere around, so uh, that's good. Uh, we are so glad that you are here. If, if you missed last week, I mean, it's amazing, as I said, how much uh, difference a week makes. Last week, uh, we had a snowstorm. It was cold. It was crazy outside. And, and I know uh, I was slip sliding on my way in. And today, we're going to hit like 60 degrees. So uh, that's just March for you, I guess. Uh, you know, uh, up and down weather. But we're glad you are here with us today. As we're looking at uh, these three words, uh, kindness, goodness, and gentleness. Uh, but before we jump into that, would you please, uh, would you please pray with me? Uh, gracious Heavenly Father, as we have been talking about these fruits of the Spirit, we sometimes feel guilty because we don't demonstrate them. And just like the disciples, we say, Lord, this is, uh, how can we be saved but we know with you all things are possible. And so in the impossibility that we see, Lord, make it possible in our hearts. May your Holy Spirit flow through us to produce these fruits of kindness, goodness, and gentleness in everything we do and say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Kindness, goodness, and gentleness. As I said, if you were here with us uh, last week, Caleb did a great job, uh, not with a pool noodle. Uh, he did a great job telling us about these three, three little words to bring peace, that peace comes through three little words. And, and the three words that Jesus says in, in the boat, in a big storm, he stands up, the disciples are freaking out, and he says, quiet, be still, and peace the, the storm completely ceases and, and the disciples are like amazed and a little frightened at the power of Jesus. But even more than those three words, there's other three, three other words that really bring us peace and that's when Jesus is on the cross and he cries out in a loud voice, it is finished. That, that his whole purpose in life to, to live a perfect life in our place. Remember Jesus says, if you wanna be saved in that Matthew reading, you have to be perfect. You have to follow a perfect life. Well, we can't do that, but Jesus did. Jesus did that for us. And when he cries out, it is finished, he says, this plan of God for, someone to, for a human being to live a perfect life has been accomplished. And now Jesus gives that life for you and for me. And so we have peace, ultimate peace with God. And so while those three little words bring peace, we're going to talk today about three words that, are, uh, that will change the world. And, and I know that's a bold statement, three words that will change the world. And you say, Pastor Steve, that, that's great, that's wonderful and everything, but really three words that are going to change the entire world. And the way... The reason I know this, the reason I have confidence in saying this is not, not that these three words are going to change the world, right? But these three fruits that we're talking about, these three things that the Holy Spirit produces in people who follow Jesus and, and let that Holy Spirit flow through, when those three things happen in Christians' lives, the world is changed. The world is impacted you see, when Christians have been moved by God's spirit to, to, in these three ways, there has been radical and positive impacts on this planet. If you think about Christianity only being around for about 2,000 years, it's remarkable the influence that Christians have had in a positive way on our society. We're talking about medical advancements, Hospitals, oftentimes, if you ever notice, a lot of hospitals have like a uh, St. Mary's or something, there's, there's like a, a, a saint attached to it, or there's a you know, Christian hospital. You're like, well, what's going on there? You know, the, the Christians have, have always had a very compelling aspect in, in trying to take care of those who are sick or who are injured. Talk about orphanages have been created to take care of those uh, young ones who, who maybe have lost their parents. The u whole university system, schooling and education founded from the church. Social reforms. In fact, the Christians were the first ones to really denounce slavery, all right, as, as, as it was being practiced, all right? Assistance for the poor, disaster relief. Think about Red Cross. What do you think the cross is for? 
Jesus. It's originally a Christian organization and so much more positive influence that Christians have made when the Holy Spirit has flowed through people in these positive ways, whether it's visual arts, architecture, music, literature. It's unbelievable. In fact, our world would be unrecognizable if it weren't for these things of what Christians have done. But as Caleb said in his children's message, sometimes it's hard to understand what these, these three words are without comparing to them to what they are not. It, it, maybe it's easier to think about what, what it looks like when we don't operate on those, those spirit principles of God. So the, the, in Galatians 5, this is where we're talking about the fruits of the spirit. Right before we get to the fruits of the spirit, at, uh, towards the end of Galatians 5, there's a couple verses earlier where Paul talks about what the fruits of human flesh of human mind are about. Because when, when as humans, uh, and we try to do the good things, <laughs> we're gonna fail. In fact, we're gonna turn ourselves and our focus upon ourselves. And I think that's why Jesus says it, it's hard for people who are really wealthy uh, to, to understand this because they don't need anything. And, and when we turn and focus in on ourselves, we say, hey, I have everything I need. It's hard for us to be kind or good or gentle. There's no reason for it. And so when you, when you think about the, the, the deeds of the flesh, Paul lists uh, these two, selfish ambition and hatred. That these, these are two things that as humans we have inside of us. And, and I, will, I will be honest with you, the Christian church hasn't always made positive impacts in this world. There, there have been times, absolutely, where the church, uh, talking about the Christian church, has done harm in our world because they haven't operated. They've operated somehow outside of the kindness, goodness, and gentleness that God calls us to. When selfish ambition shows up, when hatred shows up, it's hard for us to live out this idea of kindness. And this is where, as, as humans, we, start, we just kind of live in, in selfish ambition and hatred. We, we draw lines. We, we love to have so, those people over there that we can talk ill about. If, if especially, I mean, we just got done with a presidential election, right? I mean, talk about people who are standing on opposite sides of, a, of an aisle and just spewing uh, hatred at each other. I'm like, oh my goodness. How, how can we even in our country anymore have a political uh, debate or even a political election that doesn't have an element of this in it, of selfish ambition and hatred? And, and the problem is that's our, that's our normal operating procedure. This is why when Jesus says to love your enemies, we go, whoa, that's, you don't do that. How are we supposed to pull that off? This doesn't seem possible. And we say, well, with man, this is impossible, but with God, it's possible. And the reason it's possible is the Holy Spirit produces this thing in us. If we let the Holy Spirit do its job, of kindness. And so what, what are we talking about kindness? Kindness, goodness, gentleness, as, as Caleb said, they kind of seem to be all uh, fitting in together. But kindness, what kindness really is, is a deep down desire to help people out. That's all kindness is. It's a deep down desire to help people out. It, it's the, the motivation of Christians. We want to help that's all that kindness is. So when you say someone has shown you great kindness, they have had a great desire to help. Now, kindness in and of itself isn't going to get you necessarily anywhere other than maybe you're like, whoa, I moved because I want to help to do something. But the doing something isn't actually the kindness. The kindness is the gut reaction. Jesus is oftentimes, uh, it says that he, was, he was, uh, had compassion on the people. His kindness is such that a compassion just means to suffer with or, or to take on a, a suffering and, and that Jesus takes on some of that and goes, oh my goodness, these people are suffering and he, he kind of empathizes with them and has that kindness. He wants to do something for them the motivation to action. And in Ephesians chapter four, verse 32, we hear that um, Paul tells us to be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, 
just as in Christ, God forgave you. Kind and compassionate here in Ephesians 4.32, tied together in, in similar fashion. And you can see hopefully that, that selfish ambition, hatred are, are, are combated by this because it's something outside of ourselves. It's that motivation and that desire to help regardless, this is really important, regardless of who those people are. Enemies, people who have said horrible things to you, people who have taken advantage of you over and over again, be kind and compassionate to one another. So, kindness. But what's, what's next? What are, our, what are the other words that we're looking at? Well, let's take a look at, at goodness next. And, and the opposite of goodness is evil or wickedness. Evil or wickedness. Evil or wickedness is about what I do and what I want to do for myself. In fact, I delight when somebody's evil. They enjoy doing the wrong things. They, they enjoy breaking the law. I, I've always wondered about this because it, it has always been a... a I'll watch movies and the villain just seems to really take great pleasure in doing all the wrong things and really needling people and just messing with their heads. And I'm like, how do you, how do you even get to that point? It, it's hard for me to understand that because I, I guess growing up, I just always thought, okay, you obey the laws. You just try to, try to do the right things in society. And there's some people out there that really, you say, does evil really exist? Well, are there people who really have no regard for law? In fact, who enjoy breaking the law? Read in Romans chapter one, Paul, Paul lays out a whole list of people doing things that are wrong. And in fact, they encourage each other to do wrong and they cheer each other on when they're doing wrong. And you go, that's just, that's evil. That, that's really what wickedness is. It's the, it's the opposite of goodness, where goodness is the action. So, so we talked about uh, the kindness being the motivation, the being moved to do something. If you do the right thing, it's called goodness or righteousness. It's obeying the Ten Commandments. It's turning the other cheek. When someone slaps you on one, Jesus says, turn and give them the other cheek. <laughs> Kindness says, you want to help them out. If they're angry, I guess they want to get their anger out. I don't know. Jesus is turning the cheek. If they steal your shirt, give them your cloak also. Give them your coat as well. The, the, the goodness is doing the right thing regardless Regardless of what it means for you, in kindness, we're trying to help other people out. With goodness, we want to do the right things for them. The author of Hebrews says in verse uh, 16 of chapter 13, do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. With such sacrifices, God is pleased. God is pleased when we do the right things. That's why he gives us the Ten Commandments and says, hey, here's the way you should try to live and it's gonna be better for you if you do it this way and we try to do it and we're gonna fail. We still try. And when we know that we have not done the good we should, like Paul, when we talked about Romans 7, we go to the Lord and ask for forgiveness and we have a second chance, the slate wiped clean, and we try again. So kindness is our, is our intent, our motivation. Goodness is the action to do the right thing. And then finally, gentleness. Gentleness is the way in which we do it. The opposite way of that would be with discord or fits of rage. These are from, from earlier in, in Galatians 5. These are words that, that Paul uses, that we know people who have, who have this tendency to be very abrasive in the way in which they go about things. And, and so you can see how this might work. If someone has great kindness, I want to help. I want to do the right thing, but I do it in such a way, like it's sandpaper on your skin. Two out of three is okay, but it doesn't, it doesn't change the world. We need all three. And so when we talk about gentleness, gentleness is this aspect of intentional humility of meekness, right? Jesus says in, in Matthew chapter five, blessed are the meek, 
Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Meekness, gentleness, really what this is, is a controlled strength. That, that we know we have the strength, but we're holding it back so that it doesn't blow people away or blow them, blow them over. It's idling and pulling back the, the revving engine. And this is where a lot of us struggle. This is where one of my biggest challenges is because, boy, my emotions can get the best of me. I remember growing up that my, my, my siblings could drive me to fits of rage. And, and it's always been a, a frightening aspect of me. I know you guys are like, Pastor Steve, I've never seen you throw things, you know, grab that pool noodle and, and whip your siblings with it. That was a good illustration, Caleb. I like that one. That there are times when, when I remember growing up that my little brother, oh, he was such a twerp. My little brother Marcus could just push my buttons and we shared a bedroom together and it, because there were like 10 people in a four bedroom house and you were just gonna have to share, right? And, and, and oh man, he's like three years younger than me, four years younger than me and he just knew how to get to me, get under my skin. <sighs> Philippians 4 verse five says, let your gentleness be evident to all, the Lord is near. How do we emulate these words? How are you doing and letting the Spirit do these things in your life? You know, as we've been going through these fruits of the Spirit and, and we talk about uh, love and joy and faithfulness and patience and now kindness, goodness, and gentleness. I knew as we were kind of going into this that all of us were gonna have areas where we're like, ooh, that's one where I struggle. With gentleness, I struggle with letting the Holy Spirit help control my strength. I struggle with, with that one and, and I pray for God to, to pull me back so that my anger, my heart rate doesn't go up, my blood pressure, and I just got to trust more in the Lord. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. I'm not saying these three words are easy. I'm not saying letting the Holy Spirit do these things in our hearts is, is, a, is a snap of the fingers. But the power of the Holy Spirit, when we allow the Spirit to move in our hearts, gives us the why we want to act the way we do, kindness. It, it informs the what we should do, the goodness in the world, and the how we should go about that. This is what Jesus' followers are, are called to do. We, we do it because of kindness. Philippians 2, verse 4, we're not supposed to look to our own interests, but the interests of others. We want to seek to act in the right way, Again, read Romans 7. Paul has this great treatise there where he says, I don't even know what is good. I have to have God tell me what is good. And even then I can't do it. And then finally in gentleness, imitating the meekness of Jesus himself. 1 Thessalonians 2, we always want to use that to point to Jesus. That, that if you see Myself, if you see Pastor Steve, if you see Caleb, if you see anybody here acting with kindness and goodness and gentleness, I hope you realize that it's not from inside of us, but it's from the Holy Spirit flowing through us. And, and I'm gonna just give you a few examples of what that really looks like. I'm gonna, I'm gonna point you to the cross, point you, point you to Jesus. The way Jesus emulates kindness, goodness, and gentleness is this, when he is on the cross, I mean, here's people who have, who, have, who have been ridiculing him, spitting on him, throwing a crown of thorns, pounded upon his head, whipping him, lashing him, mocking him all the way to the cross. And even while he's on the cross. Here, here he's surrounded by enemies and Jesus says from the cross, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. Jesus wants to help. He wants to help those who are doing this harm to him. I mean, talk about kindness. That's unbelievable. 
in goodness. Jesus is, is in the Garden of Gethsemane the night before this all happens, and, and he's with his disciples, and, and, and Peter wants to grab a sword and fight for Jesus and say, hey, let's go through here. And, and Jesus goes, no, Peter, stop. If I wanted to stop this whole thing, I could. And Jesus allows himself to be arrested and tortured and killed. He does the right thing. He does the good thing. Led like a a lamb to the slaughter. That's what it says in, in Luke chapter 23. He goes gently. I mean, Jesus could have called down a legion of angels and completely annihilate these guys. You talk about meekness, talk about strength that's controlled, that's pulled back. And Jesus goes, listen, I'm just going to go. And he doesn't raise his voice to anyone. He doesn't yell at Peter for denying him three times. He doesn't shout at Pontius Pilate or at the leaders of the Jewish religious authorities at the time. He doesn't do anything to King Herod. Kindness, goodness, gentleness. Jesus goes to the cross. Willingly and quietly, he dies for you and me. Peter does something very similar 50 days later after Jesus is raised from the dead. Peter proclaims God's love to the, to the Jewish people that were gathered again in Jerusalem. The ones, very ones who, who may have been yelling, crucify him, crucify him. And Peter, in great kindness, tells them to help them understand who Jesus is. He proclaims God's love. He tells them how to be saved. He does the right thing. He doesn't say, hi, you killed Jesus Ah, in your face. You guys should all burn in hell. That's not what he says. He says, repent and be saved, every single one of you. And Peter helps them come to forgiveness, repentance, and a restored relationship with God. And he encourages them to join the movement. He doesn't shun them. He doesn't talk harshly with them. You read all about it in Acts Chapter two, and we see the world being changed when we can be kind and good and gentle. Here at Love of Christ, we have opportunities to do the same. We wanna help people out. There's a great kindness. I hope uh, that this congregation is viewed as being very kind. We, we want to reach out to people. We've, we've sent uh, mission teams to, to Haiti to help out. That's a long ways to go. We've, been, we've sent people to, to Texas and, and uh, Louisiana after hurricanes. In kindness, we want to help. In goodness, we, we do what we can to send people on their way. Maybe it's financially supporting. Maybe it's going on the, on the trip yourself. And then we do it not out of our own human motivation. We don't do it to brag about ourselves, but if there's anything that we do gently, it's always because of the Holy Spirit. All three of these flowing through us. You know, today is the first Sunday of the month and, and, and we do this, this thing of, of blue basket giving. And, and, you know, we've got these blue baskets. We hand these out once, once a month when, when we can touch each other and do those things. And, and the reason we do this is because we want to help people on our, in, our, in our community. This goes helps, and, uh, helps us to walk alongside families that are in need. And, and so it is great, in great kindness that we do this, looking at the example of Jesus and helping the poor or those who are less fortunate. And it's the right thing to do, and, and any money that comes in here goes out from here. It, it doesn't stay here. And the other thing is we try to do this with great gentleness. We don't want to brag about it. We don't, we don't turn people away. Or when people come in and say, why don't you get a job? You know, we don't do that. We don't yell at them. We say, man, it's so awesome that we can pray with you and send you out with a blessing. And we try to do it with gentleness, motivated by the Holy Spirit. And today, if you want to participate in the blue basket, we're going to have an opportunity in a little bit to do this thing of giving. Again, because we want to help. It's the right thing to do. We want to do it with with great meekness. And if there's any great impact in this world that we can make, if there's any great impact that we will make, 
gonna be because of these three words, these three words that the Holy Spirit moves through us. And so I praise God for the Holy Spirit moving here in this place. I praise God for the Holy Spirit moving in your hearts and your minds. And I pray that together we'll let the Spirit flow through us, that that great good will come through this congregation, that great gentleness will come out of all who are here, all motivated out of that great kindness that God first gave to us, that we can imitate Jesus Christ, that we might live out that love of Christ, that we might share that with everyone we come into contact with. I pray that as you find those areas where you need to trust in God, that we can all submit ourselves to let that Holy Spirit flow through, that we too might rest with God's great grace and forgiveness. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the example of Jesus and thank you so much for your spirit. Lord, as we go through our lives now in in the weeks and, and months ahead, Lord, we ask that your spirit would be powerful through us. May your kindness, goodness, and gentleness be evident through us in the things we say and do and the way in which we do them, Lord. We ask that now you would help us to to live that out with great joy because of what your son has done for us and the confidence that you are with us wherever we go. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.